So thank you everybody for uh, joining this committee and everyone should know that we are an unofficial women's committee. Paula and I were talking um, and the idea is that women, we are women here who are organizing events in the class. We participate in women's events and we see a lot of growth, but we, I think we can do a better job and just talking about things that work, don't work how we can improve our events, get more participation of women, because it also improves the number of people in the class. And, um, and then hopefully we can make some recommendation, recommendations to the international board, and maybe they'll listen to us. <laughs> so um, just starting out, I guess we won't, do, we won't do the report from South America right away because we don't have, um, is Paula coming, Georgia? <coughs> Georgia. Is Paula coming? Yeah? You have to, okay. We'll wait for her then. Hi, Matt. That's there. Okay. Um, so this um, country report of ah, Spain and Portugal. So everyone, when we speak, especially Americans, we speak too fast. Uh, we have a lot of non-native English speakers here. Try to speak a little more controlled. Okay, um, <laughs> Angela, can you talk about <laughs> the, the women in Spain and Portugal? What's happening there? What's good, what's bad? Yes, I will try to do my best with, with English. Uh, do you hear me good? Yeah. Good. So um, here in Spain, the fleet in general is growing. Uh, we have a very good national uh, circuit that consists in 14 regattas all over Spain. Um, one regatta is 15 days, so now I think we are doing very good here in Spain. Uh, last year we were like near 400 uh, sailors and near 100 of sailors were uh, women. Wow. So I think uh, it's, it's <clears throat> growing, the fleet is growing and the women's uh, sailors, uh, we are growing too. But the thing that uh, most of us, uh, we sail in mixed crews. Mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of uh, only female teams. Uh, I think only one or two teams per regatta and one of them, I think, uh, they are the Belgium girls that come to, to Spain to stay. <laughs> um, so I think uh, we are working in, in increasing the, the fleet, the woman fleet, uh, but uh, it's difficult to, to have a, 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 a female team because of the, the, the how do you say, the, the weight, the weight of, of us, yes. Um, so I think it's, uh, well, today we should be starting a national female uh, championship in Valencia. And I think it's, it was a good idea, uh, the plan of this regatta. Uh, because uh, this weekend we should have um, a, a, a big event in Valencia. So the first day is only for women. The second day we start the women in the morning and then in the second day of in the afternoon, we sail the, the normal regatta. So the girls that we sail in a mixed crew, uh, we can uh, borrow the, the boat of our um, skipper or crew and sail in the morning with a girl and in the afternoon with our normal um, uh, team. And then in the, on the Sunday, the idea was to sail um, the, the normal regatta. So we try to mix um or we try we try to to have these girls and mixed teams and and sailing a female regatta i don't know if i explain yeah. good <laughs> so um, we were working on, on on this on half female teams but we know that it's difficult so, so we try to do this uh, experiment to to have uh, to have more more girls in water Okay, thank you. So I was actually coming to that regatta with Marina Gallego, and I had no idea this was the format. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay, um, let's do um, Brazil and South America with Paula and Georgia. Hello. 
Kathleen, I just arrived. What are uh, what was the question? Um, what is your favorite color? <laughs> My favorite color? <laughs> okay, blue, orange, of course. Okay, no, if you in Georgia could talk about the situation of women sailing in Brazil and also in general in South America. Okay. So um, I'll talk first uh, about Brazil. And you have, have five minutes, Paula, five. Okay, <laughs> we have a very particular situation here. Uh, last year, preparing for the Women's Worlds, we decided to make a um, state championship for just women. Why? Because we have a lot of mixed crews and we have a crew, women's only crew here and i wanted to empower women to be skippers most women usually they are um they are crews for men the owners of the boats so uh, i wanted them to know that they can skip too uh, we have been doing clinics and everything but the championship was like a big push like yeah, go. You can go to you. You you can skip. You you are able. Um, in numbers, I was talking to Kathleen the other day, and what we have when we you make a separate championship for women, you have more women participating on women's only uh, boats. In numbers, like last year, uh, twenty nineteen, we had at the nationals three women's all, all women's boat and 15 mixed boats in a total of 80 boats um in regular regattas here in sao paulo we have always three women's only boats and an average of 10 mixed boats uh, on regattas of 30 boats. So we have 30% uh, of the fleet mixed and uh, only 1% of the fleet uh, women's only boats. Okay. When we made the women's only championship, the state championship in Sao Paulo, we got nine women's only boats. Women had a lot of fun. They loved sailing. The regattas were disputed and even the championship was won by two, uh, two women that usually are crews. So uh, not the women's only, those including me and Georgia that are sailing women's only boats every day. Who won was uh, was uh, um, a boat with two crews because they are good sailing and they won the women's only championship when you have a women's only championship you enable all those people that are from uh, other boats uh, from other classes other yeah they, they are they make other yeah other boats they they sail mix it they can sail on a women's only boat we have boats for loan because men are not sailing they are they're they're around like flies looking what we are doing which is very nice and um, even admiring that all, all that we are able to do uh because sometimes they cannot believe they say no I can't believe women are sailing. It is raining, it is cold, and they are there. Yeah, we are. We, we are sailors. We, we, like, uh, we like cold, we like wind. Uh, we, are, we can do three regattas a day. We just need the regattas to be women friendly. That doesn't mean they, can, they need to be um, weaker regattas. Okay um what else on the last nationals that was that were oh so this is slipping uh the, the last nationals were run in bahia which is a much harder 
conditions, uh, big waves, uh, big wind. There was not big wind for the championship, but it was supposed to be. I mean, we got the only three days in the year that Bahia has had no wind. But we had only one women's ex exclusive boat. And we have only three mixed, mixed um, crews. Because women were kind of afraid of going to a place with a lot of wind and uh, big waves. So we were the only women's only crew racing there. We will pretty much go everywhere to sail. And I will always sail on a women's only boat because I have a lot more fun, a lot more fun. It's not, it's not comparable, uh, nothing compares, you can even sing, sing about it, nothing compares to sailing in a women's only boat. It's, it's much, it's fun, we are companions, we like to look at other people and say, look that one, we will catch that boat and then catch the next. And we like to compete, but we have fun also sailing, which is fantastic. Super necessary. Yes. Okay, Paula, Georgia. can you quickly talk about uh, South America, Argentina, Uruguay, Chile? So, um, in Argentina in and seconds. Uruguay, they have uh, a lot of mixed boats too, but I don't, I see very little uh, women's only boats. The thing is, if you don't have a women's only championship, Women don't have the chance to take the the to steer to, to be to skip the boat. Like uh, Pietro, I'm looking at you now. How many times do your crew take uh, skip the boat? Ah, uh, Marinella, one regatta steering the boat, but uh, probably in once. Uh, once per year, but we train a lot, we, we switch the, the roles a lot. It's important for her to feel that she can be a skipper she when you are not there, that she can skip for <laughs> other people. She is a skipper. Oh. Yes, she is. Okay, okay, we're moving on. Now we are at, uh, I think, Scandinavia, Annette. Is this, where are we? Yes, Norway and Scandinavia. And then, hi. What is it? Uh, she's muted. We can I switch. I think she's gone. She's muted. Oh, she's still muted. Um, somebody make a sign. Do, do you guys hear me? Yes, oh, now we hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, so we have our nationals every um, August, uh, where it's only women. Uh, it's not a snipe event like um, like nationals for snipe. Uh, it's more for the entire uh, country. So we tried to get you know, girls from different classes to participate. Uh, we've been around 15 to 30 boats, depending on uh, each year, uh, which has been really good. but. What we see, it's difficult to get people to or girls to actually want to be helming. So most of them wants to be crew. Uh, so that's the main uh, problem for us. Um, so we have a lot of girls being crew at regular events as well. It's mainly actually female uh, who cruise, but I guess I think it's around five, maybe yeah, four, four or five boats where it's all female crew, uh, female uh, crew, uh, and female skipper. Then uh, for Denmark, I know it's one uh, female boat that participated in in Belgium as well, um, and in Sweden there's one uh, female who is uh, who is uh, helming. But I guess both uh, Sweden and Denmark has a lot uh, less. The the fleet is really um, yeah low at this point without me knowing why, because I'm not really, um, I don't really know them really well. So it's, 
yeah, it's difficult since now it's no sailing. I guess that that's the same for everyone else. Um, but hopefully it's going to get better soon. So it's going to be, be exciting to see how many boats will manage to get on the starting line this year uh, for the women's nationals. Sonia and Sara, did you sell the Norwegian women's last year? Yes, we did. Yeah, it was really nice to, uh, to meet the Norwegian fleet and uh, we really had a lot of fun there. So it's open. So everybody, the regatta is open to women of other countries. But, but I think we were the only foreigners, no? Yeah. Yeah. So we can market this, especially this year with no regattas. It could be a nice opportunity if you if you have the regatta. Okay, so moving on to ah Belgium. Everyone from Belgium. Um, <laughs> I did uh, some uh, counting this afternoon about the number of female uh, sailing ladies in uh, in Belgium, and I counted we have uh, 32 female members at this moment, which is quite a lot. Um, nine of them are skippers and 23 of them are crews. So a significant amount of the sailors are crews, but I think it's, uh, it's in every country the same situation that more women are crewing than are helming. Um, at the European, European Championship last year, the Women's uh, European Championship, we got 11 Belgian uh, ladies teams, which I think is a record in the Belgian snipe sailing history to get 11 ladies teams on the water at the same time. Um, I think the number of uh, women who are sailing snipe in Belgium increased a lot over the last couple of years and it mainly increased I think because of SWEC. A lot of, uh, of girls teamed up uh, to sail together for SWEC and we see that they continue, they're continuing now to sail together. Um, they kept, kept sailing together in uh, events in September, October, November and many of them were planning to sail together now as well. Um, so I think that's really nice that we were able to keep those sailors um, as, as ladies teams. So at this moment we see in every regatta, we see three or four uh, like only women's teams. And many of, many, of, many of the women of course are also competing together with the men in the mixed teams. I have a quick question. So the women who continue to sail together, um, are they still borrowing boats? Are they buying boats? What is the situation? I think the, the, the three or four teams we see in almost every regatta, they all have their own boats. Yeah. Um, but what is also really nice is that the men in Belgium are really supporting the idea of the uh, women who start to sail more on their own as well. So they are really keen to, uh, to give boats, to rent boats, or to, um, we can always, everybody can always borrow a boat if they want, so that's really nice. Um, and we're also looking with Skyra Belgium to um, provide some to buy or uh, to buy boats to snipes to uh, support uh, new women's teams or youth teams so that, that they can always rent it for free. Katja, anything? <laughs> I think we, so we have now 32 uh, female members, but I think we can even do better in the next couple of years because we see there are a lot of um, enthusiastic new ladies like beginner sailors who they experience the atmosphere of the ladies snipe sailing and they want to be part of it. Uh, so I think we have a lot of new coming sailors in the next couple of years who will definitely join the women's snipe club in Belgium, which is really <coughs> Okay, um, Georgia and Paula and, and the Belgian girls, do you think it's easy? I think you're both on smaller lakes and I think this is good for newer sailors, especially women sailors. So for somebody like Angela who's sailing on the sea, um, I think that makes a, a difference as well, that it's easier for new sailors to, they feel safer in the smaller lakes. I don't know, but this is something. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I think uh, I agree with that. Um, you can also convince women more easily if you can say like, yeah, but it's on a lake, it's not that long. I mean, like the Halgeweel, it's, it's very good to invite other women that, that are not used to sail in a snipe. If you have to say to them that they should sail on the sea, we probably can't convince them mm -hmm. so easily. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right, um, now we have USA North America, Charlie, who's in Miami. 
and Lisa, who's in Annapolis, which is in the central Atlantic coast near Washington. She sells, it's a big bay, so the Chesapeake. Okay. You wanna go first, Lisa? Yes. Go ahead, Charlie. So yeah, I'll just say that in this whole USA thing, Charlie and Kathleen are like current and future. I consider myself current and a bit past. So I was, yeah, I've sailed in the very first women's worlds in Yokohama back in 1994. But, um, you know, my focus has really not been as much on women sailing in the last couple of years. So Charlie is much more suited to talk about things that we're doing now. Um, I would say it's pretty similar here um, compared to what you guys all have said. Um, a lot of crews in the U.S. that are female, and now it's the majority of our female snipe sailors, but a lot of those crews also drive. Um, they skipper the boats as well, but at big regattas, it's, we're usually sailing in mixed teams, so it's hard to um, get people to practice as a female team and to go even do smaller regattas as a female team because in the big regattas we don't sail. Uh, we usually sail mixed so it's uh, it's tough to convince people to sail when there's such a high demand. I think a lot of it is because um, we need smaller crews because a lot of our skippers are big <laughs> um, but that's part of it. Um, I don't know. Also, the, just sorry, I am American. <laughs> the women, we, we sail with men, and then men pay for almost everything. So it doesn't cost us to travel to regattas because the men are paying. Um, so if, if we wanted to go to the worlds in Japan or the worlds in Brazil, the open worlds, um, it's a lot easier to go crew for a really good guy, um, do well, than to be a women's team or even drive ourselves with a guy. It's hard to find a guy will crew for us so we end up in the front of the boat so but when we have um so Kathleen and I hosted the 2018 women's worlds and we having that and like in advertising for it a lot there were a lot more women's teams out in the water so I think we just give a little bit of incentive that helps a lot you know if there's a goal to work then um more female teams will be out in the water. So. Yeah, we had a lot of female teams at our smaller local regattas, the year of the Women's Worlds. Um, and we also, um, Lisa, do you want to talk about our Women's Nationals? Uh, I mean, we, we have had a Women's Nationals since the 90s, although I think that's been getting a little harder to host as well, or at least our, I, I'm not sure where we are as far as um, results. I did not attend the last one, um, and I'm not sure we even had one scheduled for this year. Um, <laughs> so, you know, not that it wouldn't have been canceled anyway, but um, yeah, I agree with Charlie and, and Kathleen both that while there's certainly a lot of women sailors and very capable helmsmen in our circle, for whatever reason, I think either, you know, willingness to own your own boat um you know as Kathleen said just kind of the easier path it's there's always places if you're a, a good sailor or female you can always find there's always a very good skipper who's looking for you looking for crews so it's almost kind of the path of least resistance to go crew for someone which is sad it shouldn't be that way but it just seems to be um and then I think too maybe something to talk about a little bit is kind of the younger women sailors versus us old farts uh, and, and actually there's a middle stage too I'm you know that kind of it's sad but true that women still particularly once we start having families are have a lot more responsibilities than our male counterparts do so our ability to go to regattas seems to be a little more limited particularly to do a lot of traveling um, I think that's, you know, when we've looked at, I've talked to Kathleen on a couple of occasions about hosting regattas and like trying to find this like ridiculous sweet spot when we can get either people not in school and, you know, families 
you know, not in school, I think the timing of women's events becomes much more important. Um, sorry, can I say something um, mm -hmm. about that the women will choose the easy path by being a crew or, um, to a man financially or I, I'm, I agree that they, they are the main caretaker and that, that is often the, um, really hard to organize to go to uh, international regattas, but um, I don't think it's something about for example, Sarah, my helmswoman, she's with us. She she will not um, go crew for a guy because he pays for everything. She will always choose to arrange it herself because she's passionate about helming. I think we should, yeah, maybe when when young young women start sailing and they they are used to helming in I don't know another class, they we should try to keep them helming and not make the change to crew because there is it's a big difference between between crewing and helping i think it's mm -hmm. yeah i don't know i i it's strange that that helms will choose to be a crew because the men will pay for it it's not just that we're not it's not just the men but they're really good men <laughs> yeah that's guys who are in the top 10 in the world and i'm i'm a i i job but it's really hard for me to find a guy who will crew for me but and maybe you're passionate more about crewing i'm i like crewing more because i'm the, the yeah and also i don't but know is, but, but yeah. this is the reason why people like charlie who's a crew and hello is a crew um but we're also all skippers so for us, women's events are the time we can go and sail with our friends and, and drive again. So it's not the same everywhere. Um, but I know, you know, when, from when I got into the class and did well, the people started calling me, uh, you know, meet me in Valencia on May 1st at five o'clock and bam, I'm there. For a girl who lives in the United States, this is a great offer. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I do like the idea. I think I think it was you, Sonia, who said that the class association, your your local class, is looking at buying boats and you know having boats specifically to promote women in the boat. I think that could be a really good thing. You know, we're looking at doing a little bit of that just for younger sailors in general. And I think the gender roles may be more evened out in the younger generation. Only to say that younger men are as poor and as bad at boat maintenance as women used to be considered, right? I think there used to be more of a, a gap and I think now they're all in the same boat, right? Mm -hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> so I think anything that we can do as a fleet or class to make boats more available and even boat ownership more attainable and easier and support that, I think it's gonna help both women sailing as well as you know, younger people sailing and getting into the class. Um, okay, everybody, thank you. Um, we just have uh, eight minutes left. So could we have an update on the women's world for next year? So. And probably uh, you, have, you have two minutes. Two, oh, okay. So women's world uh, will be held next year. Uh, Guarapiranga Lake. It's a very nice lake. It's not so small. Uh, we had the nationals last year with 80 boats. Uh, so we can, uh, it, it's, it has good space. October is a month with um, average winds and the racing course is like 10 tops, 15 minutes sailing from the club. It's very near. Uh, and it's very nice. We will, I'm arranging with the um, CBVELA, the, na the National Authority on Sailing, uh, to be sure of the week it is going to be held, but probably the week that involves Columbus Day, that is our uh, patron saint day, that is Nossa Senhora da Aparecida. Uh, so it's a holiday here, it's a holiday in the United States, and I understand it's a holiday also in Canada. 
and it's not a holiday in Europe, I'm sorry, but <laughs> we cannot make <laughs> all, the, all the arrangements. Um, I'm doing a job putting boats together. We want all the girls to come to have fun, to be snipe divas. That is what we love, uh, to have um, gather women together and make an amazing championship. And uh, we are going to Belgium. Yes. Me. Ah, that's good news. <laughs> okay, let's hear from the Belgian team. Um, what's happening in Belgium? I know Paolo's coming. I'm coming. Charlie, are you coming? Charlie. Charlie's yeah, coming. you should. <laughs> <laughs> Zaj, okay. I too. Speak up. So Women's Europeans, can you talk about a, a championship in Belgium next year or the year after? Um, uh, we're going to have the Belgian Nationals next year. They were trying to find the date um, now in September, but we are not sure what the Corona thing is bringing. So I think we're going to move it to next year. So Sarah, correct me if I'm wrong. And yes. um, we were... Uh, talking about uh, SWEC uh, for 2022 because it will be very hard for us to find sponsors now for 2021. All the companies are in uh, bad shape now because of the corona. Um, yeah, it's really difficult to talk to people. To so it's not. We think it's not um, possible to to hold it in a good way in twenty twenty one. But we can, like you suggested, Kathleen. We can have another a test event or a, a teaser. I think that will be a good idea because after SWEC, a lot of women stayed um, sailing, and we attracted people from other classes because of the atmosphere uh, between all the women. We have a small leg and uh, small clubs. We have five clubs on a leg that is as big as your uh, bathroom, I think. Um, but the, our clubs, they are very supportive. And also the men are very suppo su supportive. We have boats almost every time for everybody. But now we see when, the, uh, when we don't do efforts to keep the women in, that we lose them. Yeah. Sarah, if you have to add, yeah. but yeah. Um, so we try, it's also Sarah, Katya and some of the women here, we really try to make the sailing for women attra attractive, not especially by um, making special events for women, but for example, we have, uh, we try to have a uh, women's podium in every regatta, in the mixed regattas also. If, and that's, um, so we also, we always, like Sarah said, if uh, like two, three, sometimes five women's teams. So it's nice that we can compete between the women's and that uh, we also have our podium and that there is a little bit of attention for the women's teams in the mixed regattas also. I think that's... We also tries to make the, like the after sailing atmosphere to make it a little bit more like women friendly. Instead of only selling beer after the race, we also try to sell rosé wine and things like that. It, it's really small things, but I think it's important to create a, the girly atmosphere, which women <laughs> really like. Nice. And we, and also we, we have, uh, we had, for example, in our club, the showers and the dressing room were yeah, not so good, and we're <laughs> we are really trying to make better showers to because the men they don't yeah they don't really care, but yeah for women it's important that it's nice and clean and so that's what we try to do to keep the women in. But I I don't think we need more. Um, we need to make an um separate circuit for women in snipe. Yeah, but to summarize, I think we can hope we can all see you. I hope we can all see you in, 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 in June or July next year for a kind of test event. Yeah. And then in 2022, we will even do better with uh, SWAC uh, second edition. Um, just one note about the dates. Um, I know clubs are busy, but the middle of June is also a holiday. Middle of July is also a holiday for in Argentina and in Brazil. Correct, Paula? The 9th. 
of, of July. 9th of July and June we have a Catholic uh, holiday that is Corpus Christi. I think it happens also in uh, for Italy and uh, other Catholic countries. Okay, it's a right. holiday, but it's Catholic related. But I, I think for the dates we have to also discuss with Yannick, and and then he sees on the calendar. The dates are not really fixed yet, but we just because of the Corona things we had to move some things. So we that's we just set some period, but the exact dates we're gonna. Come back. We also, we also have taken into account that we are with five clubs. Every club has their own activities. Um, they have sailing clubs. Um, so we, we need to take um, this all into account when we're setting a date to sail. Mm -hmm. Because if we're going to sail in July, for example, on a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday, this Friday will be already a difficult day because in July we also have all our sailing clubs going out and sail with uh, the kids and this kind of thing. So there won't be place for a big championship at that moment. No, we have the, 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 the youth uh, sailing, the sailing school all summer from Monday to Friday. So yeah, the lake is full of little optimists. So it's <laughs> not uh, possible. <laughs> we'll Danger. talk about the date later when we yeah, have more information. The dates are, yeah. Um, it's been saying we have less than a minute for like two minutes now. Um, really quick, um, probably Miami will be organizing a women's international championship um, in November this year. We've been planning it for a while and now... Yeah. So um, we were uh, planning to have a, a women's regatta in Miami um, this year. And uh, towards the end of the year when the, the schedule is not so busy for people, we have girls who do university sailing here, it's really important. And this is after that season has finished. And uh, Miami can be expensive. So this is a time of year where the, our water, the bay isn't busy and it's not so expensive to travel here or get hotels, but um, we can provide housing to a lot of people and we can provide boats for um, $40. So <laughs> um, that, that's the cost of insurance. Um, and I'll wait, I'll wait to finish the rest. Um, so we have that coming and we'll, we'll be sending out information, but it's tentative now, but just so you all know, um, if you have spare money and spare time, um, we plan on doing that. Um, we have a lot of women in Miami um, and we were supposed to have a big spring circuit um, with local racing, but it all got canceled. So anyway, um, so one of the things that um, Paola and I have been talking about is um, and it was mentioned before in increasing the the number of women's events and then the possibility of doing women's events every year like for example um, in Belgium you guys are doing an, a women's nationals but if you maybe just give it a title like the European Pietro suggested like the women's European Cup when you have a nice title the European um, Cup European Cup what? yes yeah European Cup more women come and then Paula is running a national or a a regional regatta on her lake every year. And I said, well, why don't you just make this the South American Women's Invitational? And because I'm more, I'm more likely to fly to Brazil for a Women's Invitational rather than the Paulista Women's Championship. And maybe this starts out small and you have maybe two international teams or, but over time, like for example, if I know that Mafalda is going to a regatta or say Annette, uh, and I see they're going to the Belgian Women's Nationals, I probably will want to go. So if, if you're holding a women's championship and you can get two of the top women's teams to come, you will get some of the other top women's teams to come, but you need to give the regatta like a nice title. So um, when you have an official Skyward Championship, you have to have judges and this makes things more expensive. But if you have a Women's European Cup or a South American Invite or a North American Women's Invitational, it doesn't cost as much. But also it's easier to get women from other classes to come because it has a name. So um, in the past when we had the Women's World Championship, we get women who come from other classes because they want to win this title. And then they come and a lot of them stay in the class. So this is... So we're thinking about doing a, a North American championship, a South American championship, possibly a women's European championship 
every year. And I asked Paula, I said, do you have a problem hosting a women's regatta every year? And she said, no. But it doesn't have to be fancy every year. It just, it can be a local regatta that we invite international women to it. So like, for example, you guys went to Norway last year and I'm looking at my calendar this year and thinking like, oh, if they have a regatta in Norway, it's the only women's regatta. I think maybe, maybe I will go to it this year. And then I come home and I talk to other people. Um, like I came home and I talked about the Women's European Championship and it starts women thinking. So, um, and it doesn't need to be a big regatta. It doesn't need to have big prizes. Um, and I don't, and I don't think, and I don't, it doesn't need to rotate every year. It doesn't need to be in a big venue. And we learned this from your championship. So, but nothing can be like your championship every year because of all your sponsorship <laughs> and all the diamonds. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to hear people's thoughts on this. Increasing the number of women's events, clinics, um, national championships, regattas. Um, yeah, I think it's a good idea, Sarah. And, uh, and um, I, we were going to the women's champion, I think it was now, in Spain, in Valencia. <laughs> it was this weekend. Sadly, we are not there. Um, and uh, like in Brazil, I think for us women in Belgium, the traveling to Brazil, it's uh, quite expensive. Um, and if you then also have to um, pay for a boat, um, that will actually make it quite impossible for us. So I think on the women's events, you can save money for a ticket or... Um, uh, find the cheap uh, Airbnb, but like prices like 500, 800 per boat, like the men sometimes have to do on these big things. I think for us it's impossible. So I think it's important that for that for women there will be women's teams, there will be, or some boats charter boats reserved or cheaper. And it's also nice that you. Told us, Kathleen, about the housing which would be possible in Miami. I think it's also really important if you want to attract women yeah. that you can provide free housing. It can be just with the sailors at home. I think a lot of women like it to stay with the sailors at home. Um, provide like a boat with really like a limited fee. I think those things are really important if you want to attract women um, on the different regattas. Mm -hmm. Yes, because of a lot of women are very young. We have a lot of very young uh, women that want to sail, but still the, the price is, is yeah really important. If you're young, you don't earn that much. You have to pay your bills, your housing. If you then have to pay these this expensive tickets and expensive loan for a boat and an expensive housing, you, you are very quick to say, yeah, never mind. Uh, I won't go because it's too expensive. So this was one of the things my, that I was talking about. For example, uh, world championship in Brazil, you know, probably 80% of the women from Belgium don't go because it's so expensive. And then if you don't have a, if we don't have a women's championship in Europe, then there's no championship for those women. And then the next year, if we have a world championship in say Europe, Many of the Brazilian women, Argentinian women, Uruguayan women, even Amer young American women can't pay the ticket and the charter fee. Um, so we need to have a championship in our hemisphere that same year. And traditionally in the class, they don't like to have a hemisphere championship and a world championship in the same year. Um, mm -hmm. But all the top sailors in the mixed events, they are going to they do go to the West hemisphere and they do go to the world. So they don't like to have the combined expense in one year. But I think with women, particularly so many young women, this isn't the case, you know, so the top girls will always go to these international championships, but 85% of the regular women sailors don't have the time or money to travel. So it's really important that in each hemisphere, we have a, a good regatta every year. Mm -hmm. Georgia, any thoughts? Georgia? <laughs> okay. Georgia likes the idea. Um, okay, um, so that's what we we're talking about. Um, 
I'm, I'm going to be making a women's sailing website. So if you have any ideas, uh, women's snipe sailing website, if you have any ideas, and I want to also have a page for each country. So um, you can send me ideas. And then um, looking at the long term, um, you know, we want to attract more women skippers. Um, and I think in, in, you guys are having clinics in Belgium, yeah? We did some clinics last year, women only. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to attract this kind of women who are not, um, who are not easily coming to the other clinics. Uh, but I think in Belgium, we talked a lot about this. Our main focus will stay on the mixed uh, clinics because I think it's also attractive to compete against the guys. Uh, but we do have some female only clinics, I think two or three a year, every year. That's a lot. Okay, great. Um, and then like long-term goals, uh, we, there's a lot of women sailing in uh, Italy and Argentina and it'd really be nice. We need to, there's some other countries we need to also help um, get more women sailing. And I think organizers know this, with women you have to really, you have to grab them and come. You have to give them no excuse. They cannot say no. We say we give you housing. Like, we had great housing in Belgium. Um, we had great boats that cost us very little in the end. We didn't, they didn't ask for money, but, um, but we need to have, um, we need to start helping these other countries by, you know, just if you can get one boat from Sweden, one boat from Denmark to come to our regattas, that helps. But long term, we need to develop women's growth in Argentina um, and Italy, where they have a lot of women sailors, but we don't have they don't have a lot of women skippers. So this is a problem that we need to solve. So uh, Kathleen, I need to um, to go soon for another thing, yeah. but um, your segue to Argentina is, is perfect. And I'll, I'll scan this for you for your website, but I don't know if everybody can see this. This is from, oh, the, the glare is too bad. There we go. From uh, the first Women's Worlds. Those girls are from Argentina, the Marino sisters. They were so much fun. If they're not sailing anymore, they should be. Um, you can find them in Argentina again. They would be awesome. They <laughs> did a couple of years worth. But, um, Lisa. Anyway. Okay. But, All right. We also had an Argentina team on SWEC. Yes. yes. They, and they sail a lot, no? The two girls that were on SWEC. I see yeah, them. Yeah, but they're not sailing together. They're also uh, normally a mixed team. And uh, they both wanted to go to, to Europe, um, to discover Europe. And because SWEC was over here and, and Belgium is in the middle of Europe, it was very nice for them to come over and to sail together and then, uh, well, discover Europe. Right. Um, and also the one Argentinian girl, she's a world champion. She, I don't think she sailed the snipe uh, since last year, she started to sell the snipe again, but she hadn't sailed the snipe since uh, 20, 2014. So you have right. this events, you have these special women's events and, and the women's come. And if we stop having the special women's events, the women stop coming. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, Can so, I also speak something, Kathleen, about that? Yeah. Um, we've been emailing a lot around with the uh, Belgian ladies the last couple of weeks because we can't really see each other, we can't meet at this moment. Um, and we've been thinking that it would also be nice, I think, in Belgium, but I think it would also work in the other countries, to put more focus on the ladies who are competing in the general regattas. So, for example, at our Belgian nationals this year, we, we really would like to have like a, a, a prize giving also, like the first ladies team, the second ladies team. And I think this would really be nice if this can become a habit in all the regattas to award a prize for the first, second and third lady team. Um, especially in the countries where you don't have enough women to do separate ladies regattas. <laughs> yeah, the last time we sailed in, uh, in uh, Spain, um, Thank you. Also, Motril, there were there were few. Um, yeah, we didn't sail, but there were a few um, ladies teams. But yeah, it's nice that after these big regattas, like 70, 80 boats, and you you do the effort as a ladies team to go there. That that <laughs> that there is a little, even if they just mention it, like, eh, yeah. Yeah, good job for these ladies teams or. Yeah, I, I, that will also stimulate to to make it more attractive for the ladies yeah. who are competing. So in Motril, like, they had women's teams from Spain. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, all right, anything anybody else wants to add? We'll, um, let, us, let us know um, dates, plans about any women's events in Belgium. And, uh, and then uh, we'll keep you updated about things here in Miami and I'll be working on the website. Um, and it'd be nice yes. to know, when we know if the Norwegians are having the women's event, we can start to advertise that too. Yeah, that would be good. Because it was really nice to do this. And the, it's open water, but it's not, it's close to, it's, yeah, how do you say? It's, um, if it's too much, we can stay inside. So it's, yeah, I'm lucky with my very big Helms woman, but. Who is that? Even <laughs> <laughs> but even if you're a very light team, it, it was, and there was heavy winds, they go inside and it's really nice to sail. And it's so beautiful there. Great. All right, well, thank you so much. Um, I'll just summarize some things and send everyone a message with a summary of the meeting. And uh, stay well, and I hope we see you all in the water sooner than later. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.